San Francisco Civic Center, January 28th, 1987. My ticket says most high on LSD ever written on the back. I went overboard on acid on January 28th, 1987, and I felt like the whole show was bad. I have vivid recollections of being freaked out and that the band was just plain losing it. Each member all forgetting lyrics, and every time they forgot the words, it seemed to me to be getting worse. Red liquid that looked like wine was flowing out of Jerry's mouth when he sang, and Bob's head kept popping six inches off his neck when he threw it back. In my acid head, something was going wrong. I was starting to overthink it like you might sometimes do when you're highest ever. They lost it. They can't play or sing anymore. What's wrong? It's over for them. It's over for me. I was really freaked out, but I wasn't quite losing my shit yet. In the comfy hippie cocoon inside of the show, I was okay. I felt like it was normal to be extra high, but when the show was over, I had to go outside into the San Francisco winter night, and I was not ready to go yet. I sat inside until most of the heads cleared out, but I just couldn't get my brain to calm down. I finally hobbled out and Shakedown Street was going off, although it didn't change my headspace. I was way too high and seriously overthinking my situation. I hopped around on my crutches and tried to talk to my friends, but I was clearly getting higher now than I had been all night. I freaked out and needed to crutch back to Dan's condo. The after scene out the sh outside the show was too heavy for me. Everyone was trying to sell me something that I didn't want at the time. A veggie burrito or a tie-dye or acid. <laughs> I wasn't hungry. I was wearing a tie-dye and I certainly didn't need any more acid. That was clear. Dan, being typical Dan, would not give me the key. He was messing with me in my hide, telling me, just be mellow, dude, knowing full well he was making it worse on me and laughing about it when I turned away. But that's why I love Dan. He always pushes it to the next level. After about 30 minutes, I would hyped up my drugged brain so much that after asking 10 times and being teased 10 times, I freaked out with big eyes. In a totally scared look, I an angrily demanded the key. Now! Finally, he gave it to me with an, okay, okay, I get it, dude, I get it, and I hobbled back to the ultra-fancy high-rise and opera plaza that Dan's mother had a timeshare in. The doorman knew we were staying, and normally Dan was with us, but I think he saw it in my eyes. I needed to get out of the world for a minute and rearrange my already rearranged brain. I told him my leg hurt, and he buzzed me right through. I got in the elevator and could not remember the floor number. I was standing there on my crutches with huge saucer acid eyes blankly tripping on the numbers and lights when the elevator door opened and there's the doorman again because I hadn't pushed anything. <laughs> I didn't expect that and it freaked me out so I just started pushing buttons to get it to close. It closed and I shrunk to the back of the elevator. Then the door started to open again then close. I could not figure out why no one was getting on. I forgot I had just pushed several buttons in a panic. I was really tripping and starting to breathe hard. The door opened and I quickly crutched off. I somehow went through my pockets and found a matchbook with the room number and floor written inside. My normal brain was saying, why did you get off? It was in your pocket the whole time. But my acid brain was like, you know why, you're fucking freaking out, that's why. I pushed the button again, same doors opened. I crutched back onto the elevator and somehow got to the room. But the room was swelling and shifting around and I started to freak again. I knew I had cold beers and Dan's stolen beaker from the science lab bong was on the patio. I instinctively chose the best thing to do when you're too fucking high. You get high on something else. You combine old and new to make a new high to change your headspace. It is a well-known trick and it worked perfectly. I sat on the balcony for an hour smoking bong hits and tossing back brown bottles of Henry's looking at the San Francisco city lights. I was slowly letting my overactive acid head go back to the fun part of being on acid. The good side of acid. The side I prefer to stay on. But when you get LSD, occasionally you don't get to choose the good side or the bad. It just decides for you, and you're rolling with it, like it or not. My friends came back a few hours later. I was vaguely back to normal, and that's when the heckling started. You should have seen your face. You looked so scared. We were laughing so hard. Didn't think you could move that fast in your crutches. Want another dose? I got one for you. It went on and on. My good friends. I gotta love them. I was always curious if it was just me that night being way too high or, or was the band just off that night, perhaps both. I went back and listened to the shows years later and it had vocal mistakes in every single song except Walkin' Blues. Bobby and Jerry pretty much equally blew it during every song. It wasn't just me being acid overboard, they really did fuck up almost every song that night. 
some songs multiple times. I'm not talking shit here, don't get me wrong. I just thought it was me all these years. Take a listen, just skip the acid. Or don't. Ha <laughs> ha.